Let's do it. I cannot tell you how obsessed I am with this chart. It shows exactly what is wrong with America's conversation about healthcare. Uh, on one level, you've seen this chart before. It shows healthcare spending as a share of the economy of, of a bunch of countries. There's Germany and France and Japan and Canada and oh, there's America. But now I wanna add something you haven't seen to this chart. This is how much of that spending in each country is private and how much is public. Here's what's amazing. America's government spending on healthcare, on programs like Medicaid and Medicare and the VA, our versions of socialized medicine, it's about the same size as these other countries. These countries where the government runs the whole healthcare system. And then there's our private spending. It's the private insurance system that makes healthcare in America so expensive. Conventional wisdom says the government is more expensive than the private sector. It, it can't say no, it's corrupt, it's inefficient, it's slow. You want something done right, you give it to the private sector. That is what we hear in America all the time. And yet here we are with the biggest private sector spending the most. Why is a free market so bad at controlling the cost of healthcare in the United States? If you look at the data on physician visits and hospital discharges, you can get rid of one theory. Americans don't consume more healthcare than people in these other countries. We don't go to the doctor more than the Germans or the Japanese. In fact, we go to the doctor less. The Damn, turns out we're not abusing our healthcare system by just visiting it too much. The difference between us and them is that we pay more. Every time we go to the doctor for everything from an angioplasty to a hip replacement, from a C-section to a pain reliever. In America, the price for the same procedure at the same hospital, it varies enormously depending on who is footing the bill. The price for someone with public insurance like Medicare or Medicaid is often the lowest price. These groups they cover so many people just, that the government for demand the lower prices from sub. hospitals and doctors and they get those lower prices. If the doctors and hospitals say no, they lose a ton of business. They lose all those people on Medicare, all those people on Medicaid. But there are hundreds of private insurance companies and they each cover far fewer people than a Medicare or a Medicaid. And each one has to negotiate prices with hospitals and doctors on their own. And if you're uninsured, you have even less leverage. Nobody is negotiating on your behalf. So you end up paying the highest price. One Spooky, study found that most hospitals charge uninsured patients four times hype train. as much as Medicare patients for an ER visit. Other countries, they, they don't have this problem. Instead of every private insurance company negotiating with every healthcare provider, there's just this big list. Country, the central government, they go and they say, if you want to sell to us, to all of our people, then here's what you can charge for a checkup. Here's what you can charge for an MRI or a prescription for Lipitor. And so then whether that bill goes to the heavily regulated private insurance companies in Germany or directly to the government, like in the UK, each country is telling the doctor or hospital Point or list. drug Thank company how much biddies. that bill will be. And because the government controls access to all of the customers, it's an offer that hospitals and doctors and pharmaceutical companies typically can't refuse. I'm gonna make them an offer they can't refuse. In America, the, the idea is that you'll be a consumer, that you'll do what you do when you go to Best Buy and buy a television, but that just doesn't work in healthcare. It doesn't work in healthcare because you often come and get healthcare when you're unconscious in an ambulance, when you're scared, Ambrick, when it's for your spouse you for or your child. It is a time when you have the subs. least bargaining power. Holy moly, you are that's not very generous of you. Thank of you so no. much. You're not knowledgeable enough to do it, you're not comfortable doing it, or you're not conscious enough to do it. That's why in other countries, the Very government pot. is a person who can say no for you, who can say no, that's too expensive, you're gonna have to lower your price because they do have that power. A new push for single payer healthcare right here in the US. Single California and others are saying maybe we should adopt the European model. If we decided to create a single payer system with one of these huge priceless in the US, there'd be nothing to stop lobbying from hospitals, from doctors, from drug companies, and those prices would get influenced. So we could end up with a single payer system that is expensive, even as expensive as our current system. It all depends on how much you negotiate down the prices. And now in America, these groups have so much power because they are so rich that it's really hard to get them to bring down their prices. This is the irony of American healthcare. It's so expensive that it's become hard to make it cheaper. All that money they make, that becomes political power. And years and years and years of overpaying, those are huge industries now. And they have a lot of influence in Congress. Under a single payer system, if we did drive prices down, doctors and hospitals, they would be paid less than they are right now. That might mean some of them close or some go out of business or some move. It would be really painful. One person's weight. Well, yeah, I mean, but that, that only really assumes that hospitals would be private hospitals that would close because of like 
lack of business. But the government can run hospitals at a loss because that's what governments can do. Waste is another person's essential service or local hospital or their income. But then single payer, it's not an all or nothing choice. For instance, there's a really interesting section of Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill where he lays out this interim plan. It's a plan he wants while he's setting up his new single payer. Unironically, chat, I'm not making this up. Uh, the, the chud that I banned uh, sent an unbanned request telling me that if I was a real woman, I would get more subs. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe... Uh, Maybe we need to get more subs in this chat. I don't, I don't know. Just a uh, food for thought out there. Air system. And in that plan, he expands Medicare to cover vision and dental, and he opens it to nearly everyone, not just people 65 and older. All kids go on Medicare automatically, and most adults can buy in. That plan on its own, it wouldn't get American healthcare spending far down overnight, but it would at least begin to recognize what we already know and what most other countries already do that healthcare is one of those things the government can do cheaper and better than the private sector. True. True. Based. Good job, Ezra Klein. You didn't screw it up. Spooky, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Spinach Monster. Um, by the way, currently undocumented immigrants uh, don't have health insurance uh, because guess what? When you're an undocumented immigrant, you don't get access to things like CHIP to cover your children's health expenses. When you're an undocumented immigrant, you don't get access to the Affordable Care Act and its marketplaces. You don't get access to Medicare or Medicaid. Um, so it, it turns out that when undocumented immigrants get sick or need to use the doctor, they just choose not to and instead put off their care until they absolutely need to go get care, right? Um, oh, Spinach Monster, thank you for the five tier one subs. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for paying that forward. And thank you for completing level five on this hype train. Choo-choo, motherfuckers. You guys did it, and you, ha you still have a minute to spare. Now, granted, you haven't gotten up to our all-time high uh, hype train percentage, but this is a, you know, you guys did it. You did the hype train. You just haven't set the world record yet. Even in your asylum centers, the healthcare is bare non-existence. Existent? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, when we're talking about this, um, essentially it has to be, it has to be uh, this system that essentially uh, forces undocumented immigrants to only use emergency room healthcare that they then cannot pay for. And so I think we need a bit of swing music and dancing for the hype train. Okay, but we're doing, I'm, I'm doing a segment. Um, after segment, we will do swing dancing and laughter. Thank you so much everyone for that hype train. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. And um, just for that.
Dr. Democratic Socialism, how could I not miss you? The only thing I've changed, Dr. Democratic Socialism, has gotten bigger. <laughs> I appreciate the no comment. <sighs> that was fun. I will hydrate. Dr. Democratic Socialism. We're going to be we're going to be going for a couple more hours yet. I still have a lot of content to get through about Medicare for all. The Ajipai of water bottles take that back. Uh All right, I have to add it. I have to do an ad break. All right. Now chat it's very important that you all all of you uh follow this discord all right click the link click the link in chat that's the entire premise of this medicare for all organizing stream is to get more people involved in the fight for medicare for all to make sure that no one is kept out of getting uh uh, health care on the basis of their income. Uh, let's fight together. Click that Discord link. Join, join the fight. And uh, let's make sure that we can, you know, get Medicare for All passed. Uh, it will give you a bunch of actionable things that you can do right now to get involved in the fight. It will also give you a ton of information about the state of single payer bills in every single state in the United States. And it will help uh, put you kind of uh, in the movement. So you will be able to uh, participate in both national and state movements for single payer and Medicare for all. And frankly, we all need to be involved in this fight. We all need to be there. We all need to do our best. So I really, really hope that you all click that link and get as many people involved as you can, okay? Mm, Holly Hoops. I marched today in my hometown for Medicare for All. Hell yeah. If only, if only someone could gift Holly Hoomst a, a gift sub. It's me, Natalie Marie. Thank you for gifting Dr. Democratic Socialism a gift sub. Pointless, thank you for gifting a sub to Holly Hoomst, one of our cutest members, based on the emojis. 
That's how I judge all of you, by the way, based on your emojis. Uh, give me my Medicare. I want it now. Unpopular opinion. I may be the only socialist who doesn't believe in Medicare for all. Uh, that is an unpopular opinion. But you know what? You should still join the Discord and fight for Medicare for all for us, okay? Due to peer pressure. Um, <laughs> Y'all are cuties. It was a trick. You're all cute. Also, Picard is cute. Um, so, as I was saying... You all need to hit the Discord link that I just put in chat. Hit that link, join that Discord, and you'll be involved in the fight for Medicare for All. That's a super important thing that you need to do. It's the entire point. The entire point of this long stream is for me to get you to click that link and join that Discord. Am I still banned from your Discord? Honestly, Dr. De Democratic Socialism, I don't know. I have to check. Orange Poppies, thank you for the 100 biddies. I appreciate it. Not the one, thank you for the follow. Am I cute now? Woohoo Lulu, you've always been cute. Your name is literally so much fun to say. <laughs> Y'all better join that Discord, I agree. <sighs> All right, back to content. Something about undocumented immigrants. Uh, basically, the, the costs that we have to society from undocumented immigrants are not solved by not giving them health care. In fact, by not giving them health care, we actually increase the amount of costs uh, to society. So we need a Medicare for all system that gives undocumented immigrants health care. Bada bing, bada boom. That's what I was talking about. I used, I, I had a study. We were going to go over it. But the, the long and short of it is it's more economical to give Im, uh, undocumented immigrants health care. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. And now we continue. Where does all the money go? Where does all the money go? Let's see. The pandemic, one year in. Despite large profits in 2020, health insurers see volatility ahead. Uh, oh no. Think of the poor, innocent health insurance companies. You know, United Health Group, a company that reported its full year of profit. Uh, for 2020 at 15.4 billion dollars. That's not the that's not their revenue. That's not their earnings. Their profit for the year was 15 billion dollars. 15 billion dollars. It's it is absolutely absolutely criminal. We're talking about profits in hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. That's a lot of money. I agree, it is. Um, if we actually look at this, health insurance profits topped $35 billion last year. Um, in So again, in 2019, health insurers as an industry made 35 billion in profits. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, oh, do I need to reload this tab? I think I do. Yeah, here we go. Um, we actually have a year over year comparison in, uh, in 2018, United Health had 11.9 billion dollars in profits, uh, and in, then in 2019 they jumped up to 13.8 uh, billion in profits. Uh, <laughs> like when we're talking about the profits of these companies, I guess only CVS was unprofitable in one year. Um, the rest have all been profitable. It's it's wild. Even like the smallest, the smallest of these, like Molina in 2019 made uh, $737 million in profits. Hell yeah, Spinach Monster. Thank you so much. Do the thing. 
give your friends links to that me that Medicare for All Discord, okay? Use that Discord link and share it to every person you know on social media, okay? You get your you get your like uh, sixty year old steel worker grandpa, okay? You you get him to sign that too, okay? Be like grandpa. You know how your union fought for everyone to have health care? It's not it, everyone in the union to have health care. Well, it's time to fight for everyone in the country to have health care, okay? They probably made lots during the pandemic. And woohoo, Lulu, guess what? United Health Group in 2020, they went from 13.8 billion to 15.4 billion. They're their profits increased by over a billion dollars. Um, also, let's take a look at how much money they they make total. In total, top health insurers' revenues soared to almost one trillion dollars in 2019. In total, that's how much that's how much money they take in. Uh, what do you think the best path to getting Medicare for All passed under Biden? Felix Night Owl, if I'm going to be totally realistic, we're not going to get Medicare for All under Biden. Biden fucking sucks. So we're not going to get Medicare for All under Biden, no matter how much we want it. What we need to do is actually roll up our sleeves and do the work. And doing the work means organizing people and getting people involved. And we need to get more progressives into office because right now the progressives that are in Congress, uh, the Bernie Sanders is the AOCs, they're the ones doing the work to get the infrastructure bill that is going to be passed, uh, to also expand Medicare and Medicaid to cover vision and dental and hearing. Those expansions literally help so many people across the United States. It's ridiculous. And if we apply even more pressure, we might be able to get them to lower the age of Medicare down to 60, which doesn't sound like a lot, but would literally cover tens of millions more people. So we're not going to get it under Biden, but we can take steps towards that end. And every small step is something that can make it easier to take a second or a third or a fourth step. Uh, in fact, if you look at what Bernie Sanders' original plan for Medicare for All was, it was slowly lowering the age of uh, eligibility down every every couple of years. That was that was the original plan. Just because we don't have the like the full insurance package done, doesn't mean that we can't take tiny steps towards that end. Uh, additionally, earlier in stream, we were talking about uh, single-payer options on the state level. Uh, things like CaliCare. California had a single-payer option on its ba on it on in its Congress, in its uh, leg state legislature, um, and it didn't quite pass. But we are getting to the point where even the states are slowly stepping up to pass uh, single-payer or at least to attempt to pass single payer. And we need to apply pressure on both the state and the national level if we wanna see this happen. So it's gonna take a lot of work, it's gonna take a lot of effort, and that's why we need to organize, which is why I'm here doing a Medicare for All organizing stream, and why I want everyone in chat to click this Discord link. Click the Discord link that I just put in, join it, and let's uh, work together to make the world a better place, okay? So, again, returning to this issue, um, top health insurers' revenues soared to almost $1 trillion. And remember, where are those revenues coming from? Those revenues are coming from people who are paying them so they don't die. That's, that's the end story here. In fact, you could have people pay less. For example, you could have them pay a portion of their income, like, say, 6% and that would cover all of the expenses for Medicare for All, and Medicare for All would be cheaper for the entire health insurance system. Um, and 
you'd basically be able to. Oh, you just got rolled up on by a skunk? I'm sorry, Jim. That can be a stinky situation. Almost as stinky as privatized health insurance. But um, so what I'm saying is there's a trillion dollars of revenue here for basic implementation of healthcare. What if we just applied uh, an income tax? You know, a certain percentage of your income goes to paying for uh, health insurance. You know, 6% of your income. Guess what? That would mean everyone from the middle class down to the working class would be able to make more money because their, uh, their money wouldn't be tied up, their compensation wouldn't be tied up in their employer's insurance. And on top of that, you would have more money and be fully in insured for both mental health care and uh, anything that physically ails you. This would be an incredible boon to society. And the fact that we are instead letting private companies bilk us for literally trillions of dollars is frankly astonishing to me. How you can make the argument that this is a better system is beyond me. Oh, on top of that, uh, in a survey of representatives of the accident and health insurance industry in the United States, it was found that in 2020, the, se the sector spent $184 million on advertising. In the preceding year, the industry's ad expenditures amounted to $219 million. Do you know what happens in a single payer system? You don't have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars advertising it every year. Instead, you can just provide the service and everyone gets it. It's pretty cool like that, actually. It's pretty cool that everyone gets the service at its full functionality without having to advertise it, saving money on, you know, advertising costs. True Holly Hoops. That, that is the big, the, big, uh, the big plus for the system, isn't it? Lily Bros for Prez. What's up? Jordan Leto, I don't know why you're bringing this up, but uh, you do you. Uh, fun fact, adjusted for inflation, did you guys, did you guys know that total expenditure on, uh, Healthcare spending uh, increased by around $933 billion from 1996 to 2013. For uh, relatively the same levels of outcomes, we are spending a trillion dollars more for no reason. Except that that money is now going to the wealthiest people in society. Yeah, Lily Rose for Prez. I, I don't I don't get it. I don't really care about the Olympics though. Some of the growth in the price 
of health insurance and health care largely does have to relate somewhat to like the aging of baby boomers. Like the older baby, baby boomers get, the more health care they need. You know, obviously that's going to have an effect on health insurance and how much people are spending on health care. But like, yo, a lot of it is just the, the, the price of the services that are being offered because they're being offered at higher and higher prices because they can know they they know they can make higher and higher profits. In 2020 during the pandemic, March 6th through April 3rd, the share prices of United Health um, dropped to $189 a share. It's now $417 per share. With this surge, they have expanded their dividend rate to $1.24 per share, meaning just owning 15,000 uh, shares, pandemic rate, $2.2 .2 million, easy money. Um, UNH pays you $74,000 annually on top of over share price increase. This is healthcare for a profit. Absolutely, Ambrick. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> 